Sixth grade, module five, lesson four, classwork. Opening exercise. Draw and label the altitude of each triangle below. So remember that the altitude is a line that is perpendicular to the base, meaning it creates a 90 degree angle. So we're looking for, we're gonna make something that's perpendicular to the base right there. So I'm gonna use this as my starting point and just create a line that's perpendicular. So creates a 90 degree angle. So that is what we're going to call the altitude. Okay, so B, again, a line that's perpendicular to the base. So let's call this the base. And then there already is a line that's perpendicular to the base because it's a right triangle. So we don't even need to draw one there. There's the altitude, and then on the last one, let's use this as the base. And then I'm gonna draw a line perpendicular to that. Which I can't really do with that, so I'm gonna extend this. And then I can draw a line right there. So here, this would be called the altitude. So even though it's not technically connected to the base right here, it still is perpendicular to it if you extended your imaginary line. Number one, use rectangle X and the triangle with the altitude inside tri triangle X to show that the area formula for the triangle is area equals one half base times height. Okay, step one, find the area of rectangle X. So this was an attachment. I don't think it's in your book, but so there are where here is rectangle X. So in order to find the area, you would have to measure. And when you measure, you would find that it is three and a half inches or three inches by two and a half inches. So I can't draw on here, but here's X right there. It's three inches by two and a half inches if you measure the rectangle. So, it will be area is equal to three inches times two and a half inches, which would be equal to seven. There's one digit behind a decimal point, so I'm gonna move it over. That would be equal to seven and a half inches squared. So that's the area of the rectangle. What is half the area of the rectangle? So if we took that and divided it by two, bring the decimal point straight up, two goes into seven three times, bring down the five, two goes into 15, uh, let's see, two times seven is 14. I'm gonna bring down a zero. Two goes into 10, five times, so no remainder. So we get three and 75 hundredths inches squared. So we took that and found half the area of the rectangle would be three and 75 hundredths inches squared. So step three, prove by decomposing triangle X. That is the same as half of rectangle X. Please glue your decomposed triangle onto a separate sheet of paper. Glue it onto rectangle X. What conclusions can you make about the triangle's area compared to the rectangle's area? So this is something you're gonna have to do. So you, what you're gonna do, you're going to cut out the triangle Basically, you just need to cut out the triangle and glue it onto the rectangle. And when you do that, it should take up half of the rectangle because the triangle is half of the rectangle. So that's something I can't really show you on the computer, but just cut it out, glue it on top of the rectangle. Um, and then it says, what conclusions can you make about the triangle's area compared to the rectangle's area? And let's say, because when you glue it, when you cut it out and glue it, you'll notice that the triangle 
that's inside half of the rectangle. So we know the triangle's area is half of the rectangle's area. Okay, number two, use rectangle Y and the triangle with the side that is the altitude, triangle Y, to show the area formula for the triangle is S equals half base times height. So same thing, but now you're doing it with uh, Y. So Y is actually a square. If you measure it, you'll see that it's three inches by three inches. So we're gonna find the area of three inches by three inches, which three times three is nine. So the area of Y is gonna be nine inches squared. And then you're gonna cut out the triangle Y and glue it on top of the square Y, which will show you that it is half, the triangle Y is half of the rectangle Y. So let's solve that. So find the area of rectangle Y. So if you measure it out, it was three inches by three inches. And three inches by three inches would be nine inches squared. So there's the area of the rectangle Y. What is half the area of rectangle Y? So nine inches squared divided by two, or you can multiply it by a half either way, would be four and a half inches squared. So that's the area of the triangle. Step three, prove by decomposing triangle Y. So this is where you cut it out and glue it on top to prove that triangle Y is half of rectangle Y. And we will say that the right triangle or triangle Y also fits in exactly half of the rectangle so the triangles area is half the size of the rectangles area Okay, and one more, rectangle Z is down here. Okay, so this one's a little trickier. So we have rectangle Z and triangle Z. So the area of rectangle Z, if you measure it out, it is three by two and a half, three inches by two and a half inches. And I believe we already did that. I believe that's the same as this one. Yeah, it was seven and a half inches squared. So what was half of that? Seven and a half inches squared divided by two was three and 75 hundredths, I believe, yep. So then in step three, prove by decomposing triangle Z that it is the same as half of rectangle Z. Please glue your decomposed triangle onto a separate sheet of paper, glue it into rectangle Z. What conclusions can you make? Okay, so similar to the two other triangles, when the altitude is outside of the triangle, meaning the altitude is, here, let me try and kind of draw that. So triangle Z looks kind of like that a little bit. So the altitude, you'd have to extend the base and bring it down here to form your right angle. So it's not going to fit exactly into rectangle Z. But when we find the area, it should be three and 75 hundredths inches. When you find the altitude, and do the base times the height with using the altitude as your height. So a little bit trickier because it's not gonna fit exactly in there, but it will still be 
half the area. You could fit it in there. So let's say, even though the altitude is outside of the triangle, The area is still half the area of the rectangle. Four, when finding the area of the triangle, does it matter where the altitude is located? So does it matter where the altitude is? It doesn't really matter as long as you correctly locate it. So say no, it does not matter. The formula is always one half, area equals one half times base times height. Remember base can also mean altitude if it's not a clear or sorry, the height can also mean altitude if it's not clear what the height is. So number five, how can you determine which part of the triangle is the base and which is the height? So the base and the height form a right angle because the altitude is always perpendicular to the base. So it really doesn't matter which is the base and which is the height as long as you have them both labeled because um, it doesn't matter in what order we multiply them. We just have to make sure that we have a right angle that's perpendicular to the base, and we can call one the base and one the height. So let's say the base and height of any triangle form a right angle because the altitude is always perpendicular to the base. Okay, exercises six through eight. So less explaining here, just more calculating, which is my favorite thing to do. Okay, so just calculate the area of each triangle. So we're doing, remember, area is equal to one half base times height. So let's find our base. So here, the base is 24 inches. So area is equal to one half times 24 inches times the height or isn't exactly labeled. So this isn't the height because it's not perpendicular to the base. So that does not count as the height. This though, when the base is extended is the height or the altitude of this triangle. So times eight inches. So let's do 24 times eight first. Four times eight is 32. Eight times two is 16 plus three. So we get 19, 192. And let's find half of that. Two can't go into one, but it goes into 19 nine times. Two goes into 12 six times. Nothing to bring down, no remainder. So we get the area is equal to 96 inches squared. All right, number seven. Remember, area is equal to one half times base times height. So we have one half times, let's see, the base is gonna be this right here, 12 and 3 fourths times the height is gonna be this, which we have to extend it to find the height there, nine and a half. So, Let's go ahead and make these into uh, improper fractions so that we can multiply them. So one half times 
let's see, 12 and 3 fourths, 12 times 4 is 48, plus the 3 fourths makes this 51 fourths, times 9 times 2 is 18, plus 1 is 19 halves. So we just need to multiply all of these together. And I'll start with 1 times 51 is 51, but we need to do 51 times 19. Should be 6. So we get 969 over 2 times 4. We need to multiply the denominators. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So 969 sixteenths. And let's just make that back into an improper fraction. We can do that, or mixed number. We can do that by dividing. Okay. 16 can't go into 9. It can go into 96. Oh, jeez. Maybe 5 or 6 or 7 times. So let's try 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3, oh, yes, goes in 96 times, perfect. So that was 6 times minus 96, we get 0, bring down the 9, um, 16 can't go into 9, so we put a 0 up here, and since we're doing fractions, we can just make this and 9 left over out of 16. So we get 60 and 9 sixteenths. So the area is 60 and 9 sixteenths, and our label is feet squared. And number 8. Draw three triangles, acute, right, and obtuse, that have the same area. Explain how you know that they have the same area. So. I'm just going to start with a right angle, or a right triangle, and then I'll draw an acute triangle, meaning that all of these angles are acute angles, and then I'll draw an obtuse triangle. So again, mine are not perfect, yours don't have to be either. I'm sure your teacher understands you're just free ending stuff. Okay. So this is obtuse because it has one obtuse angle. So all it needs to have is um, everything needs to have the same area. So I'm going to make this, I'm just going to make it simple. So I'll make that 3 inches and 3 inches. So the area of this would be 1 half times 3 inches times 3 inches. Here I'm going to make this 3 inches and then we just need the altitude right here to be 3 inches. And then again, I'm going to make on the ob obtuse one, I'm going to make the base here 3 inches. And then the altitude, which is going to be this over here, I'll extend the base, make that also 3 inches. So they're all going to be equal to 1 half times 3 inches times 3 inches. So even though they have the same uh, they all look different based off of my measurements or the ones that I just made up right there they will all have the same area 